Hi, my name is Melissa Deswart. I'm a professor in the Adelaide Law School and I will be presenting the first two weeks of this MOOC. I have long had an interest in the internet and the legal issues which it generates. As a practicing lawyer working in the technology area, I was introduced to the internet and the social and moral problems it generates even before the advent of the web. I'm very excited by the range of experts that I have been able to meet and interview and who you will meet as part of this MOOC. The internet is a wonderful world, a place where many of us have come to live our daily lives and to seek self-expression and fulfilment, but for some it is a dark and dangerous place. I believe the internet is being threatened as a place of open exchange by commercial and government interests who seek to monetize and control it. As a lawyer, I fully understand the need to impose some order on the chaos and the need to protect national security and personal interests and commercial investments, but I am concerned that we are not having the conversations we need to have regarding what that regulation should look like. I hope that this MOOC will contribute to that discussion by providing a broad spectrum of expert viewpoints. You will need to make up your own mind, but I hope that the conversation started by Snowden will continue and that you will play a better informed part of that conversation. Hello, I'm Rebecca. I'm intrigued by the politics of metadata and surveillance. Who collects your data and what they do with it is political. And it's on one level an extraordinary and challenging area with revelations and names such as PRISM, the latest cyber war and technology. On the other hand, it's still the state and humans and the collection of information on other humans. So how do we engage with this? The questions that interest me is the language of engagement which will support us into the future. A surveillance by the state is here. How does the state not become unwieldy or remote from our engagement. The International Human Rights to Privacy provides, at least on one reading, some of that language. If we look at broad themes, it does a few things. Well, the right to privacy is not absolute. It acknowledges the need for surveillance to support security. But then, it requires justification of this surveillance, including revelations. It requires evidence of the usefulness of metadata surveillance over time. It humanises the activity of the state. The International Human Right to Privacy gives some conceptual tools to deal with the unwieldy politics of metadata and surveillance. And that's why I'm interested in this area, as I literally learn how to talk and think in this new political environment. In week four, I look forward to doing this with you. My name is Dale Stevens. My perspective in this course is one that principally addresses the issue of national security. To that end, I represent a counter view in some respects to that of my colleagues in tackling the question of cyber surveillance. My focus is in two distinct but not entirely unrelated areas. In week three, I will examine the activities of states undertaking surveillance and laws that govern such practices. With the increasing technology in our lives, I will also look at emerging threats and the way national legal systems regulate access to data, especially metadata, to counter such threats. I will also look at the broader picture of how international law has traditionally dealt with electronic surveillance of other states. In week five, I will look specifically at the conduct of cyber operations by states and non-state actors and outline the views of a number of experts involved in the preparation of the Tallinn Manual that addresses the international law that applies to such operations and attacks and responses permitted by states.